You've been charged for staying dedicated to the grind. You have the right to remain silent and keep the hustle to yourself or help others with the game. All right, state your name for the record. Teasy. How do you come up with that name? Oh, man. My, my whole family called me Tay. I just took the Tay and, and stretched it out to Teasy and ran with it, and it ended up sticking. What's your, where's your hometown at? Compton, California. Compton, born and raised? I mean, I was half like Rialto, half Compton, but... I'm, for the most part, I'm more accounting. Yeah, have you ever changed your name before? No. Nope. So what's what's your main high school? Where did you spend your high school years at? Uh, I went to Ike for a little bit, but I was homeschooled most of my high school. So who introduced you to music? Uh, my mama at a young age, a real young age. My mama used to be a rapper. Her name was Royal T. A lot of people don't know, but she was almost signed. And I realized I got the talent from her and ran with it. <clears throat> At a young, that was a young age too. Shit, I've been rapping since I've been about probably six, seven years old. Who, who's your idol? I mean, who, who's your role model in the music game? To me today, it's not no rapper in this game like Nipsey. Nipsey is the person that I'll, I I watch from the ground up, from Bullets Ain't Got No Name, Volume One, Two, Three, and all that. And then I, I kind of like study this program and and build my own foundation around that, man. So are you on any record labels? Are you signed anywhere? Nope. I ain't signing nothing. You started your own label or anything? Or how are you doing your music? That's what I want to do. I'm going to take this Day 1K in and rock that into my own label. But if somebody come with a good enough deal, shit, you know, I'm going to rock with it. But until then, I'm kind of like independent. Have you performed anywhere? Yeah. Like where? Uh, we performed at the Trooper during Hollywood. Um, some of the spot Corona, I thought was called something big, though. Uh, the Revolution in San Bernardino. Uh, we just performed at the uh, Mint Tuesdays off Pico in Hollywood. Um, what's that? What else? I had a couple more. I can't think right off the top of the head, but we had a couple. So are you writing your own songs or you got a ghostwriter? Everything is original, fresh out of this brain right here. I write all my songs in the studio. You put the beat on and I write the song 30, 45 minutes. So what's your main topics of your songs? Like, What do you rap about? Most of the shit I rap about is shit that I've been through. Like when I first started rapping when I was young and shit, I used to be like everybody, oh, I want a Bentley and this and that. But as I start really going through shit, like nigga really being shot in the head and all that shit, and really done hit prison twice and all that. Like I got, I'm telling my own story. Like everything in my shit, I ain't gonna say no name, no none of this shit. But I, I really rap my story. I get all my topics off of shit that I actually done been through. Every 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 bar that I say in my song is gonna be somebody around the world that be like, damn, I remember that shit when that shit happened. Facts, man. Um, what's the big biggest challenge as an artist? The biggest challenge is really just keeping like a, a solid team. It seems like in today's age, everybody wanna be in competition. Like you you start off with 50, 50 people that's just ready to rock. But then once one person start getting right here, one person start getting right here, this person start looking at him a certain way, and then it just bring bullshit. Like, if you you can't do this shit by yourself. I mean, you can, but it's going to take way longer. And now you might leave this earth before that shit happen. But if you do it with a solid team, shit, you're going to get there. But right now, it's just a challenge keeping the team up because everybody want to be at the top. So what's your ultimate goal? Do you want to be a... 50-year-old rapper, or are you trying to use this as a stepping stone to open up other doors? Both of them. I want other doors to open for me. Of course, I want to open other doors, but I don't rap because I just think that's a hustle. Man. I just, this is what I do. Like, this rap shit is really in me. Like, I, 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 I release my, my pain and my anger. When I, when I step in the studio, I'm not on earth. When that door closed and that beat come on them headphones, I'm not here no more. I'm in a whole nother level. I'm going to keep that forever. What would you be doing if you wasn't an artist? If you wasn't releasing this pain, your therapy as this music? Man, look, I plead the fifth. Can't talk about that one. What artist would you like to collaborate in 2019? Nipsey. Nipsey. I need Nipsey on something. If your fans could remember you by one thing, what would you want it to be? Uh, I mean, I'm just not no fraud. I ain't no fraud rapper. I want my fans to know like this is this is real. This this is a real 
struggle that I'm rapping. I, I really done went through this shit. I want y'all to think like a nigga just was handed a business or a hundred thousand dollars and built a studio right hell no. I, I'm I'm building this from the ground up. I'm fresh out of prison booming like this. I want y'all to know like I really put everything into this. So what got you into prison? Shit, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Little boy, see, I picked the fifth on that one too. Did you learn a lesson? Did you grow from prison doing time? Hell, kinda. I mean, shit, <clears throat> kinda. So I'm, basically, you just made more connections in prison. I mean, you could say that. You could say that. <laughs> I so, would say, look, I ain't, I ain't right, I ain't running around robbing shit no more and all that shit, man. That's out. So I listened to the um, the fucking Blue Devil, man. What's the concept of the Blue Devil? I'm the fucking Blue Devil. That's teasy. That's the concept of it, man. I'm not. And a lot of people be like, religious this, religious that, man. I'm just, just me. That's what I. That's what I was coming up. That's what got me in the prison. I was a fucking Blue Devil. And that's just what I've been rocking with since way back then. That was me. Man, this song, uh, Day One K, man. How how you come about that? Man, look, it was a group of us back then, right? We was always 9 thick. We started a group called 9 D. And it was my niggas. And we get to a little party. We all get to drinking and all that shit, man. I get to fighting one nigga, <clears throat> fighting another nigga. These niggas start packing me out. But I'm kind of baffled by the situation because these is niggas that I was with. Tell me I was thugging with these niggas. So... This went there and that went there and then I just, you know, they say you got to cut all the loose ends. You got to separate the loose ends, just like I said in the song, man. All that day one shit, that shit was out. I left that night with them niggas right there because I consider all them niggas my day one niggas. And if a day one nigga can do that to you, then i just be day one K. I'm cool. I don't do day ones. I, bros, I got the homies from the set, all that. But a day one... Just like I met you and you my day one, that's out. I don't do day ones none, cause them, them the ones that fuck you over. So who is Nightmare, man? Oh, that's my producer, you rapper. Sh you show him much love. Every song you shot him out. That's <laughs> love right there, man. That nigga, he been around. He just stuck through from a young age. That's why that's like my my family, my producer. He a rapper himself. He he dope. Y'all yeah, gotta I check him, him out. I heard him on one of the tracks. He was getting off. Uh, hunt that yeah. ride out number yeah. nine on the Blue Devil. So, um, you say you've been shot in the head, man. How? What happened in that situation? Shit. You know, this went there, that went there. Bullets got flying and call went to the head. Well, is it near, near death experience? Did you see the light? I mean, did you hey, spiritual no, 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 growth or something? I mean, did you learn anything from it? I learned. <laughs> well, I'm not saying me, but you niggas out there, man, if y'all still caught in this life, y'all better shoot first. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good lesson right there, but at that time that it happened, I was a young nigga, man. I was still blinded by the streets. So, you know, catching a shot to the head instead of me, like, I could have died. It was like, damn, I took a bullet to the head. Who outside of the business like room? It's like a badge. Yeah, like, like, like I did that. I got that on my chest. Yeah, that shit ain't cool, though. A lot of you niggas, man, it's, it's a lot more to life than that. I mean, so who who could we else find on this um, Blue Devil album, man? Uh, we got Hit of J3. Uh, we got Counting Ass TG. That's my boy right there. Uh, we got Nightmare on that motherfucker. We got Marazza, dope ass singer. She's stupid, dope. Uh, who else? I think that might have been it. We, 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 we're supposed to have a couple more features, but I'm going to drop the first quarter and just blow y'all mind. I keep hearing this. The South is next, man. Who who's is the South? Who's in the South that's got next? Man, the whole hood got next. Keep it gangster, but we got me. We got Captain Ass TG. We got the Twins, thirteen hundred. We got a uh, Jabba. We got Nightmare. Shit. We got Kilo. We got Macchiano. Shit. We got man, the, the whole hood. We low key like booming right now. We built yeah, this I from the ground up. Freestyles at the park, man. What's sick. Decipher? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. We, we building this from the ground up. Trying to take it somewhere that the, the industry ain't never gave us the opportunity to take it to. So, I'm going to be looking on your, found your weak spot, man. What's that right there? Your daughter. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Every man have a weak spot, man. That's so, how, how, how is it being fatherhood, man? How you take that role? Man, that's the best thing that ever happened to me. That shit better than all the money I touched. Living life through this bullet. 
being born and everything. My daughter is my joy. That's why I wake up in the morning. That's she don't even want her mama no more. And I hope she watches. She always, bro, where my daddy? I said, I, I love that though. A lot of people they they take for granted. They choose the streets over their kids. They have a kid and they go. They rather run the streets and go function and all that to build their kid. I'm the exact opposite of that. So, I, what did you have a father in the household? Hell yeah, my pops was there my whole life. My pops was there. He rocked it out with us our whole life. He made sure we never wanted for nothing. Moms and pops, they wasn't always together, but they made sure that we we were solid on both sides. So you got a solid female holding you down, man. Yeah, yeah. How benefit uh, having somebody solid holding you down, man? You never got to worry about nothing. You ain't got to go find this right there. Is that that's the best thing? And that's that's better than all of it. She right there. Did she tell you about fake niggas or yeah. put you up on a little sneaky shit? Did she see? Yeah, motherfucking yeah. And she don't. I'm the bottom of the shoe. <laughs> you better tell me about that shit. So where's where's this day one crew at now, man? What they doing at now? Shit. Hopefully somewhere in front of a liquor store. About to ask me for fifty cent when they see me or something. I don't know. Shit, I don't know. They man, that's somewhere around this motherfucker. So how how do you pick up? How do you start this buzz, man? This buzz you got going on? Is it Compton? Is spreading out everywhere, man? Oh man, look. So basically, I was coming with before. It's a lot of people that are rapping. Huh? I forgot to mention uh, Soldier too when you said the rapping. My boy Soldier Slip. But it's a lot of people that rap in the hub. But it was basically like the dollar side, the Gmail, this the birds land, this over here, this over here. And basically, a nigga was just like, and me, I'm from Chester Avenue. So we were just, I said, fuck it. Instead of pushing all these little, this over here, this over here, this over here, I'm just going to push the South got next. Because everybody got a different reach to a different platform. But we ain't going to never reach that motherfucker unless we come together. So that South got next, that eliminated all that shit. And everybody came together. And then I started cracking with these Freestyle Fridays. Then Freestyle Fridays will put me on a platform. I started with one video. I was getting like 200 views a video or something. The next week, jumped to like 600. Then I started getting 1,000. Then I hit like 8,000. And then shit, it was just been rocking ever since. And then TG came with the TG Tuesdays. And then, you know now, a lot of people just doing like the little own separate freestyle days. And you got to do what you do to get there, feel me? But I, I, can, I can literally blame this whole success right here on Freestyle Friday and South Got Next. Because without them starting to push me, or push whoever rapping, we wouldn't have came this far. And without the Freestyle Fridays, shit, I would have never even thought of the South Got Next. Where could we find and watch these Freestyle Fridays? Uh, my Instagram is TZ with three E's underscore day one K. D A Y number one K. Okay, I got the little scoop too, man. Well, um, let's talk about this nigga smashing your girl, man. <laughs> What's up with that? Uh, you talking about the day one song? Day one K song? Yeah. Oh, man, I ain't even gonna plead the fifth on this, man. Look, I had me a little pretty ass, light skin bro, with tattoos and all my name all on her face and this and that. She give me about 200 a week while I'm in jail. I'm down too. Keep it against I'm down. She done brought me phone and everything else. And man, I get into it with a, she, she told me she get into it with a uh, enemy. I end up getting, reaching out to the enemy for the get up, man. What the fuck, you know the deal, what the, what, what? And the enemy tell me, man, why you on me? You need to holler at your bitch. Because <laughs> your boy, <laughs> he been over here fucking every day. And this nigga ain't knew me or my boy. So I, I knew it had to be true, man. So a nigga just caught in and it just came out, man. My everyday nigga was fucking my main bitch the whole time I was in jail, man. I think he had to be pregnant and everything. But shit, I'm a dog. I was cool with that. So your homie was holding your house down. Hell, motherfucking yeah. Inside and outside, all that shit. <laughs> Nigga creeping while I'm sleeping, all in jail. So um, how much time you spend in the studio, man? Uh, Shit, I got a studio at the house, actually. Uh, you know, they say you got to invest in your craft if you want to actually do something. So when we bought everything for the house. So literally, it's every day. But every weekend, I go to... Uh, man, is your studio in the bathroom? Nah, it's in, it's in the room. It's in the room. Everything good, right? Everything good. But every weekend I go to uh the League of Stars studio, man, through my boy Pun, H Boy Pun on Instagram. They got a dope little studio, dope rates, everything legit. 
And we ain't going there. We record for about three, four hours. So what's this new project you working on, man? Uh, I'm finna drop something probably like within the first four to five months of the first quarter. But I don't, I'm just kind of debating if I want to come with the Blue Devil 2 or the Day 1K. It all depends on what the fans want to give me, but I'm for sure finna come with some heat. Y'all ain't heard the first project. It's the blue, the fucking Blue Devil. Y'all got to go peep that one, man. If y'all follow me on Instagram, go check it out on Instagram. That motherfucker hot. The second one going to be 10 times hotter than that one, hands down. So how did you adapt being 19 going into the prison? Shit, man, to keep it gangster. It's like shit, nigga been in the streets my whole life. When you first go to jail and you young and shit, that shit's scary because at the same time it's like, nigga, you might be 120 pounds and a nigga that's face to face with you that's an enemy, that nigga might be 36, 280, fresh out from doing 10 years type shit. But if you a real nigga, man, that shit, it's, it's in you, it ain't on you. It's like it ain't, ain't no way around that shit. It's either it's going to make you or break you. You can... I wouldn't call it adapting. It's basically like, man, just really bringing it more out of you, feel me? You know, in the streets, when you're young and you game bang, you're going to be a beast with everybody. When you hit prison, you ain't got them guns. You ain't got none of that shit, man. So now if you really like a lion or a gorilla like you was portraying to be out there, you got to really bring that side out of you. It ain't like you could be like 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 a pussy and just change and turn into a hard nigga. Hell no. If you're a pussy and you're in jail, and they finna, they finna be known you use a pussy. I'm getting your story back to whatever you got going, man. Whatever you got coming your way, it's gonna come your way, man. But it was it was definitely hard because it was it was new to me, feel me? And then coming from the streets to to a jail cell every day. Now being so young, did you find guidance into somebody, or did your gang car pull you in? How did yeah, they go about that? It wasn't not no single person that kind of put me in. It was like said homies, like man, count the crap. You rocking over here, the hub and the dub. It was the, the whole army of us. Uh, that's one thing I can say. Game bang kind of benefits you. Say you go to jail, say instead of being in there by yourself, if you game bang, you probably gonna run across like ten of your homies, which is fucked up. But it's beneficial to you at nineteen years old on your own in that motherfucker. That's really a shark tank, a lion's den. With ten of your homies in there, and then say everybody else from Compton to watch, they gonna they gonna embrace you unless y'all are enemies on the street or something. But they're going to embrace you, man. Everything going to be good. They're going to teach you the ropes, show you the ropes to that shit. Now, say if you um, was in a gangbanger, it was in there solo bolo. Have you seen anybody in there like that? How did they survive? You got to be yourself. You got to be a real nigga. I mean, don't, you can't get into too much. You got to really like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like like monitor the words you say to people because you, you really by yourself. If, if you go in there and you don't gangbanger, there's... 30 of us chilling in this corner and we all from Captain Crip and you and you walk up and say fuck you or something, nigga, you finna get rushed by probably 30 niggas. And depending on the level of the yard or the level of the people shit, you might not see them all. I done seen a one yard, two yard, three yard, and a four yard. Shit, it's, it's different. Either way it go, you gonna get your ass whooped. But this level, you might get whacked. This level, you might just get beat up. You know I mean? But it's by yourself, it's, it's, it's harder for sure. Cause you ain't got them people behind you that's gonna go for you. If I go, all these niggas behind me finna go. Now if you're a non-affiliate and you go with somebody that's in your race, nigga, you just you just show you. It's that's your ass. Now would you compare compare the difference from county and the pen? County is cool. County like more. You go in there. You it's it's like your hood. Shit. You're going there, a couple homies from your hood, then they got you. But really, county is like where you finna do most of your fighting at and all that shit. You run a cars, you're gonna run your enemies back to back. When you get to the pen, it's, they tell you when you cross that line, if it's worth fighting, it's worth killing. That make you think about it a little more, feel me? In the county jail shit, you go in there, you fight, you just had a fight. Your eyes falling, whatever, that's what it is. But as soon as you hit that state line, they tell you off the dribble, man. If it's worth fighting, it's worth killing. You got niggas that have been down for 30 years. That's running they program smooth, got all type of little shit going. Now you just come in your first year and your actions just dictated their whole program. They're not going for that. They'd rather see a nigga dead before he let this nigga stop him from talking to his wife every day. He's been talking to her for 30 years. Easily, feel me? So after being DP, say you have to DP one of your homies, do you hold a grudge or you get over it? Nah, hell no, nah, man. We shake hands and go eat a spread together after that. Uh, so why most of us on the streets, I mean, 
Because I know I heard of, like homies tripping on each other on the streets, but it's a whole different game in the pen. I mean, if you can take a fade in the pen and then shake hands, why niggas can't do that on the streets? Because in the pen, you can't go shoot at a nigga and then disappear for 10 years. <clears throat> if you go if you go find this nigga in the pen, or you go stab this nigga in the pen, nigga, we locked within these four walls. <laughs> Where you gonna run to your cell and close the door for 10 days straight? Hell, motherfucking dog. You ain't going nowhere. You you forced to keep it right. Like, on the streets, okay, y'all DP me. I come do whatever the fuck I want to do and cross the border to Mexico for 10 years and live the best life of my life. <laughs> but, nigga, if I'm in cell 256 and you in cell 250 and you fire me in the day room, you finna have to come out of 250 eventually. It's, it's just mandatory. So, any advice of the young cats on their way of getting locked up, man? What would you tell them? Just keep your head straight, man. Keep your head straight. If you already knee deep in that motherfucker and ain't no turning back, don't change, man. If you gangster, keep it gangster. Shit, keep it gangster. That's the only thing that's gonna save you. I mean, you can't. Don't don't be a gangster on the streets and a bitch in jail. And don't be a bitch in jail and a gangster on the streets. You are gonna be held accountable for all everything that you do, no matter where you at, man. So just you know, keep your head in the game, man. It's hard for a young nigga because. It's a lot on your shoulders in that situation, man, but shit, sometimes you got to do what you do. So after hearing all that, man, have you ever killed anybody? Man, I plead the fifth. Give me my motherfucking lawyer, man. We out of here, man. Hey, 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 lawyer. <laughs> Grind face.